You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Religious minorities continue to face persecution in Pakistan. Afghans struggle for basic human rights under Taliban rule. And captured terrorist exposes Pakistan Army and ISI. Let's begin the show with Pakistan, where atrocities and discrimination against religious minorities continue unabated. Such crimes have taken in the form of abductions, murders, mass killings, religious conversions and atrocities on allegations of blasphemy. In the latest incident, a Hindu sanitation worker in Hyderabad city of Sindh province was booked in a fake blasphemy case over alleged discretion of Quran. The complaint was lodged by a local resident after his brawl with the worker. A report. In Pakistan, discrimination and atrocities against religious minorities persist unabatedly. These crimes against humanity include kidnappings, murders, mass killings, forced religious conversions, threats of violence, extrajudicial executions, and killings based on blasphemy accusations. In the latest incident of persisting atrocity, a large mob of Islamists laid siege on the house of a Hindu sanitary worker identified as Ashok Kumar, accusing him of discreting the Quran. The incident took place in the southern area of Hyderabad in Pakistan. Kumar had a spat with a local shopkeeper named Bilal Abbas. Following the heated argument, Abbasi filed a complaint against the Hindu man for committing blasphemy. The violent mob also raised the slogan of Sir Tan Sejuda and called for the lynching of Kumar for insulting the Quran. In addition to this, another incident occurred in the Bunar region of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa where members of the Sikh community came to the streets after a Sikh girl was kidnapped and forcibly converted to Islam. We want justice! We want justice! We जो हमारे ऊपर हमला हुआ है यह इतिजाज उस वक्त तक जारी रहेगा जब तक हमारी बच्ची हमें वापस नहीं मिल जाती हमारी बच्ची कल से इंतजामिया ने अगवा करवाई थी बुनेर की इंतजामिया इसमें मलवेश है बुनेर की इंतजामिया ने उसे अपनी जबरदस्ती टॉर्चर करके उससे बिना बयाने हल्फ लिए उसका निकाह नामा करवाया है उसको अपने पास रखा है हमें वरगलाते रहे पूरा दिन हमें वरगलाते रहे थाने में हमारी पायर दर्ज नहीं करवाई उन्होंने सिंस 1990 माइनॉरिटीज इन पाकिस्तान हैव बीन टारगेटेड ओवर क्लेम्स ऑफ ब्लास्फेमी एंड अदर डिस्क्रिमिनेटरी लॉज इवन मुस्लिम्स हु स्पीक अगेंस्ट दीस इनह्यूमन लॉज आर टारगेटेड Tragic killings in Pakistan over blasphemy accusations are not just about extrajudicial vigilantism. The country has the world's second strictest blasphemy laws after Iran, according to the US Commission of International Religious Freedom. People accused of blasphemy face a grueling struggle to establish their innocence and even after acquittal, they face threats to their lives. Moreover, the abduction, forced conversions and marriages of non-Muslim girls have become one of the biggest human rights crises of the era. The 
police often turns a blind eye to such reports and set up impunity for perpetrators by refusing to record a first information report or falsifying the information. As a result, the victim girls are largely left in the custody of their kidnapper throughout the trial process, where they are subjected to rape and forced to claim that the conversion or marriage was consensual. In most cases, production of conversion and marriage certificate is enough evidence to pardon the abductors. We have seen against the Sikhs, against other minorities, uh, they, against uh, the women being kidnapped, they are forcibly uh, married. Uh, so we are seeing in Pakistan an increased um, a, a incidence of such cases, uh, which is very worrying in fact. Pakistan makes every effort to present itself as a saviour of minorities and misses no opportunity to pat its back before the international community. However, the reality is far contrary to the hefty claims made by Pakistan's government. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the international community that cares about safeguarding human rights to take the appropriate action. It is urgent that the world community act now to prevent the complete eradication of minorities from Pakistan before it is too late. It was a year ago that the Taliban completed its conquest of Afghanistan, capturing Kabul and sending the nation into yet another spiral of turmoil after the chaotic withdrawal of the US and NATO allies. The country is facing a severe decline in religious freedom and common Afghans, particularly women, are struggling for basic human rights. A report. Since the Taliban seized power in Afghanistan, the country is facing a severe decline in religious freedom. A report by United States Commission on International Religious Freedom has said that the Taliban administration has failed to safeguard religious minorities from Islamic State attacks despite repeated pledges to do so for all ethnic and religious communities. The report has further added that the terror outfit's strict conceptions of Sunni Islam adversely affected all the Afghans who do not adhere to that interpretation. Moreover, the plight of Afghanistan's Christian community has also gotten extremely worse with religious minorities in Afghanistan being threatened by a surge in terrorist attacks. Since the Taliban took over on August 15 last year, the atrocities of Taliban officials have forced the country's Hindu and Sikh minorities to escape persecution. Gender minorities have either fled or evacuated to other countries. Many Afghans feel deeply despondent about the direction the country is being taken in by the Taliban. تغییرات بزرگ که در زندگی دخترها مدی است که مکتب باز نیست و ما یک سال که یعنی تیر شد ما درس نخوانیم و جبران از بسیار سخت می باشه ولی باز هم خواهش داریم که ما بتونیم به درس های خود ادامه بدیم و سال آینده ما بتونیم به مکتب بریم و درس های خود ادامه بدیم ولی تغییرات دیگه هم هست که اقتصاد مردم افغانستان خراب شده More than a year after the Taliban takeover that saw thousands of Afghan rushing to Kabul's international airport amid the chaotic US withdrawal Afghans at risk who failed to get on evacuation flights say they are still struggling to find safe and legal ways out of the country. It's Afghan women who have been affected most by the Taliban's new laws. When the Taliban swept into power last August, many expected they would reprise the draconian governance of their 1990s emirate. Despite pledges of moderation and reform from some Taliban factions, one year later, those predictions have largely turned out to be prescient. The issues that the Taliban have been taken from the Taliban have been taken from the side of the Taliban. Unfortunately, in a period of one year, 
هیچ واکنشی از طرف گروه طالبان ما ندیدیم و هیچ جواب مثبتی برای ما ندادند Afghanistan is going through a very difficult time and the de facto rulers in the war-torn country are not willing to listen to what world leaders are demanding. Instead, they are playing the blame game. On one hand, they are violating human rights in the country and on the other hand, the regime is holding West responsible for all the challenges country facing at the moment. Taliban rulers are not ready to accept the fact that in the absence of conservative ideology situation in Afghanistan would have been in a much better situation The Taliban group whose leaders include several designated terrorists seized control through force and is intent to impose its extreme ideologies on common Afghans It is one thing to reverse the modest advancements in gender equality and education that have been accomplished over the previous 20 years. Yet the regime wants international recognition as a legitimate government of Afghanistan and wants the world's assistance to tide over its difficulties including its devastating earthquake. The Taliban group must realize that just as the world is rushing to help with humanitarian assistance for this natural disaster it can hardly stand by and watch a taliban made disaster unfold let's now turn our attention to the union territory of india's jammu and kashmir where the indian security forces have started a number of counter terrorism operations to destroy the network of pakistan sponsored terrorism islamabad is making every effort to launch infiltration attempts in the region but the vigilant indian security forces are putting an end to these terrorists with a commitment to upholding peace and tranquility in the area in the most recent incident security personnel stopped a group of three terrorists from crossing the line of control in the rajouri region of jammu and kashmir we have a report the neighboring country of pakistan and its proxies have made repeated attempts to disturb the peace in the jammu and kashmir region terrorists are given funds and training so they may sneak into jammu and kashmir and assault security personnel and civilians however observant indian security forces consistently thwart infiltration attempts and eliminate terrorists in jammu and kashmir putting a stop to islamabad's nefarious efforts in the latest Indian security forces neutralized two terrorists as the army foiled an infiltration bid along the line of control in Rajouri district. According to officials, a group of suspected terrorists tried to sneak into Pukharni village in Noshera under the cover of darkness from across the border. One of the terrorists stepped over a landmine causing an explosion around 10 p.m. on August 22. army troops who were observing the movement of the terrorists laid a cordon and started a search of the area on 23rd august morning they recovered several arms and ammunition including an ak47 rifle three magazines and bullets from the site of the encounter this was the second military operation carried out in the northern jammu and kashmir federal territory by the indian army since august 21 On the intervening night of 22nd August a group of 2 to 3 terrorists tried to infiltrate through the Lam sector our alert troops picked up their movement while they were crossing the LC and then monitored the same as the group moved they entered own minefield due to which a series of mines got activated and two terrorists were eliminated on the spot a third who is possibly injured and is hiding there or he has gone back taking the advantage of inclement weather and dense foliage Pakistan backed terrorists in the valley are not only attacking security personnel but are also targeting innocent civilians in the region 
India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir has seen a sudden wave of targeted killings in the recent months. A large number of deliberate assassinations occurred in Kashmir this year. Seven police officers and eight civilians, including six members of minority communities, were killed. Actually, terrorists have changed their face. Now, they are carrying out target killing by wearing the mask of hybrid terrorists. These hybrid terrorists are often Kashmiri youths who carry out the crime and easily become part of the mob again. Terror organization instigate such misguided Kashmiri youth and give arms in their hands. Such hybrid terrorists are made to carry out targeted killings by luring them with little money or drugs. In response to an increase in targeted killings in Kashmir, the Indian military forces have recently stepped up their attempts to eradicate terrorism from the valley. These sort of uh, random killings have been going on after Article 370 was uh, abrogated. And this is because there are the other people who were trained and who were picking up arms and all are now either eliminated or have gone underground. Now these people are those underground overground workers whom ISI has now directed to do these targeted killings of all non-Muslims over there, whosoever is there. This is just to give a message across and also to make headlines that Kashmir Valley is not free from terrorism. And now the challenge before security forces is to get hold of all these underground overground workers to ensure that once these uh, overground uh, underground workers are caught and put behind bars, then only will Kashmir Valley be free from all terrorism and militancy. The terrible murders of unarmed citizens and security officials in Kashmir are a reflection of the anger among terrorists and their mentors on the other side of the border. However, such heinous terrorist activities won't be able to undermine Jammu and Kashmir's progress because the people of Kashmir will stop this plot in its tracks. The latest incursion attempt in the Nosera sector comes in the wake of a detention of a Lashkar-e Taiba guide who also operated for a Pakistani Army Intelligence Unit. This arrest was done on August 21st. Tabrak Hussain, a resident of Sabzikot village in Kotli in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, was apprehended for the second time in six years while attempting to cross the border. On interrogation, he has exposed Pakistan Army's direct involvement in supporting terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. Take a look. A suicide attacker from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir who was captured by the Indian Army on August 21 at the line of control in Rajori district in Jammu and Kashmir has confessed that he was tasked by a colonel of the Pakistani Army to attack the Indian soldiers. The terrorist identified as Tabarak Hussain revealed that Pakistani Colonel Yunus Chaudhry had given him around 30,000 rupees to carry out the suicide mission. He, along with other terrorists, had conducted two to three close recce's of Indian forward posts with an aim to target them at an opportune time. On 21st August, a Pakistani terrorist was arrested by the Indian Army when he was about to carry an attack on an Indian Army base. During interrogation, the terrorist revealed that he had been given rupees 30,000 by a Pakistani army colonel, Yunus Chaudhry, to carry out this attack. This yet again proves that Pakistan is aiding and abetting terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. It also shows that Pakistan is now more desperate to carry out such attacks in Jammu and Kashmir so as to permit more trouble in the northern state of India. This is not the first time when a captured terrorist has revealed Pakistani army's nefarious designs. Last year also, a 19-year-old captured terrorist Ali Babur had told that Pakistan army was helping terrorists infiltrate Jammu and Kashmir for violence and their personal benefits by spreading misinformation 
and brainwashing the youth. Pakistani Army and notorious ISI have been known for their perennial support of terrorist organizations in Jammu and Kashmir and other parts of India. To sustain the Kashmir movement at minimal cost, the Pakistan Army and ISI plan to cause disaffection and alienation by playing the Islamic in danger card. In pursuance of objectives, they are engaged in spreading the tentacles of terrorism, not only in Jammu and Kashmir, but also in Punjab, Assam and Nagaland by carrying out subversive propaganda on fundamentalist and communal lines. The ISI has established operational links with drug syndicates and fundamentalist Islamic groups in Pakistan, Afghanistan and India. The Pakistani establishment has always overtly and covertly supported terrorism activities, be it by giving them financial aid or giving them safe havens on their soil to operate or to train the terrorists or to give them psychological and moral support. The Pakistani establishment has left no stone unturned to support the terrorists in whatever way possible. According to the latest congressional report on terrorism, Pakistan is home to at least 12 groups designated as foreign terrorist organizations by the US, including five of them being India-centric, like the lashkar e taiba and jaish e muhammad Pakistan has been supporting these terror groups for years. Several camps have also been established across Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir for training of the terrorists. Most of them are usually lured for monetary gains or brainwashed with fanatic ideologies. The country is also facing the brunt of this measure as Pakistani civilians have been on the target of several terror groups. The countries with regressive thinking that are using terrorism as a political tool need to understand that terrorism is an equally big threat for them. But the real question is that, will the Pakistan learn from these experiences and mend its ways to ensure its own growth and success? Only time will tell. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.